Hello and welcome back to the Rev Fire Group Apparatus Conference and Expo. My name is Chris McClune. I will be your host for the day. And as you can see behind me, we're going to be talking about Spartan Fire chassis today. We've we've gone, you know, we're this is this is week five. We've we've gone from E1 through Ferrara, through KME, through Spartan ER, and now we're going to talk a bit about um, the the uh, the uh, the basis for all of uh, Spartan ER's uh, products. Uh, we've got a number of things coming up today. We've got uh, the Spartan chassis and OEM highlights. We also have FDIC powered education today. We have the engine company's guide to winning, stretching for success, and that's going to be with Steve Robertson. We have that from one o'clock to two o'clock. Also, always remember Rev showroom meetings from 11 to 1 and 2 to 4:30. That's your opportunity to touch base with a Rev. Uh, with a rev representative to get some questions answered. Maybe they're questions that we couldn't get answered today during our Q&A or questions that you thought of after. That's a perfect opportunity for you to, to get to that. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome my guests for today. Oh, before I do that, just real quick, uh, just remember, uh, you'll notice today that, that our guests, as they're walking around, they will not have face coverings. That's because they are practicing uh, the proper social distancing that the CDC recommends. Also, uh, if we do happen to step on each other once in a while, audio-wise, uh, remember we are coming uh, coming to you live via the internet from several different locations. We've got Rev Fire Group headquarters, we've got Maryland, and we've got southeastern Pennsylvania. So let's get into our guests for today. First of all, we have Ricky Riley. He is our Fire Apparatus and Emergency Equipment editorial advisory board member, and he is the president of Traditions Training. Joining us again, now he's our resident Spartan expert, having gone through the Spartan ER last week and now and now with Spartan chassis. Um, we've also got with us today some representatives from Spartan. We have Jeff Seal. He is the director of Spartan Fire Chassis OEM Sales. We have Greg Lewis, who is the regional sales manager for Spartan Fire Chassis. And at the desk today, back at the booth, we have Mike Vernig, who is the vice president of sales for the Rev Fire Group. Now, Mike, uh, we're getting into kind of what is, you know, the, the DNA of, of Spartan uh, today uh, is the chassis business. It, it is a, a business that uh, has certainly, it certainly predated the, the, uh, the body manufacturing that Spartan ER has been doing in recent years. I know from, from personal experience, uh, my fire company, uh, was a company or was a customer of Salisbury Fire Apparatus. So we had, we had, I think, let's see, I'd say uh, one, two, three, four uh, Spartan Salisbury apparatus uh, in our in in our fleet, and we actually still have a uh, one of those Spartan Salisburys in service. So that Spartan chassis business selling to uh, other OEMs has been a big part of it. Could you could you comment a little bit about that before we jump into our first video, which will highlight uh, some of those OEMs? Yeah, and thank you, Chris. Thank you, Ricky, by the way, for uh, for joining us again. You did such a great job last week that you got invited back. Um, the the chassis business is, like you say, it's core to Spartan. In 1975, when they started the company, they started it to be the cha the custom chassis supplier to the industry, and the uh, you know it, it's it's been their DNA. As the industry has changed and companies have rolled up and other companies started buying and building their own chassis. You know, it's kind of morphed into into other things, but you've heard us talk for the last four weeks about DNA. And anybody that's tuned in and watched the videos, you really got to see E1, and you got to see Ferrari, you got to see KME, you got to see Spartan ER, but you got to see the DNA of those companies and what makes them great. But the foundation of, of the custom fire truck business is Spartan chassis. In fact, we're sitting here at E1 today in our, in our headquarters down here, and it's not the first time a Spartan chassis has been in this building. Uh, you know, I have an ad from 1991 in my office that shows uh, the ad for the, the E1 private label cab. So when you look at our brands, KME, E1, Ferrara, you see that, you know, they've all at some point in time in their history have built on a Spartan cab. So very excited today uh, to present this product. I have a history from the beginning of my career in the fire service with, uh, or fire sales with, uh, with Spartan. So really excited for, uh, for us to dig into the videos. But the first thing we're gonna do here is kind of show you the process of what a chassis does. Because I tell our people in Charlotte, Michigan, where the chassis are built, 
it's not a fire truck until it goes to the OEM, and we call the OEMs anybody that builds on the back of our chassis, but it really doesn't become a fire truck until it goes and has a body or an aerial put on it. So we have a short video we're going to show you that kind of highlights, first of all, what makes Spartan chassis unique and how it's built and how it's manufactured, but then also the life of it. And we're going to feature three of our top OEMs that we have who have provided a little bit of video for us just to kind of highlight what they do. So with that, Chris, I'll turn it back over to you, but I'm pretty excited about today's show. Okay, thanks, Mike. Uh, let's get into that. Uh, let's get into that first video uh, covering Spartan chassis and some uh, and highlighting some of uh, your OEMs. Let's roll it. Uh, that was probably the uh, the shortest video we've had in the past few weeks here. It's a little little new for me, but uh, but again, very very informative video. We talked a little bit about those OEMs. We'll get into them in just a second. Mike, if we could cut back to you first, uh, could you talk? You mentioned uh, in your introduction uh, your experience uh, selling selling to OEMs. Could you talk a little bit about about that and just expand on that a little bit about that experience? Yeah, so in 2003, I ended up owning a business in Southern California, and, and um, we had a customer called Riverside County Fire, and they wanted to buy a fire truck, and they wanted a Smeal. Uh, Smeal didn't have distribution at the time, and so I became the Smeal dealer through my other business in California, and that was my introduction uh, into the fire truck business. And, you know, I have a lot of experience because at the time, Smeal was an independent company. We were an OEM. Uh, I did become an SBI dealer shortly after that and ran that business for a number of years before I sold it. And, and I got to say that uh, I have a, an infinity to the, to the OEM business and to what it is to be a Spartan OEM. But you'll hear me talk a lot in, uh, in my dealings with people on a relationship sale. So I believe that the dealer sells the truck, the dealer has the relationship with the customer, and that's, that's where that interaction takes place. And so to have a chassis that, that's sold through multiple brands, uh, to me, is just kind of the dealer goes out and builds a relationship and they sell the truck. And so we really believe that fundamentally and we're very excited, uh, again, to show this product, but also we're very proud of, of that history that, that, that Mr. Stekiel and, and Foster and, and uh, started back in 1975. Okay, how many, uh, you, you mentioned, you know, like in your case, it was, it was Smeal and then uh, eventually SVI, uh, you started to sell for them as well. But how many OEMs are there out there currently building on Spartan chassis? 
We currently have 43 OEMs that are under contract, but when I give a number, I usually use a number of 32. And I say that because there's 32 OEMs that are active that, that purchase chassis on a yearly basis. Uh, but there are 43 uh, currently in the fold uh, for the family. Is that a number that you are looking to increase? Is that market for you uh, as mature as it's going to get? Well, again, we, we now own three fire truck companies uh, along with Spartan, other, other fire truck manufacturers. So, you know, we have an opportunity to, to look at what that looks like in the future. But, uh, you know, the, the, the fire truck industry for us is, is pretty stagnant as far as numbers go and OEMs. So we're not really looking to add more OEMs. Again, I, I look at every opportunity from a relationship standpoint. A customer that wants to buy a Spartan should be able to buy a Spartan. And if we have a relationship with the OEM that they prefer on the back, then we're fine uh, working with, with any one of those OEMs. Okay, and you almost just touched on my next question uh, during during your answer there. And what is it about Spartan chassis that that makes them so desirable to to the OEMs? Well, if you saw in that video the way that they produce their cabs, starting from 1975, it's it's a it's a very automotive process. It's much more streamlined and and the way they manage complexity, uh, everything there is assembled, and so you know. They'll talk behind you. Uh, Jeff will talk about the uh, the 26,000 options that are available, or or whatever that number is. But the bottom line is, it's it's the fact that you can get what you want. That it's built to a extremely high level, 100% engineered product. So it's it's built more on the automotive uh, spectrum than it is on the custom fire truck spectrum. But you still have all the complexity and the customization. And then, like I said, that's chassis because of its legacy in the industry goes to an OEM and becomes whatever that is, whatever that DNA of that OEM, they, they have a way of injecting that into the product. So the product is, is, is amazing on its own, but it becomes even better and enhanced when it goes and, and becomes a fire truck. Talk, uh, getting into the video a little bit more, could you just talk uh, quickly to uh, the OEMs that were chosen for that video? What, what made you choose them? Uh, and, and just talk a little bit about that. Of course, you've got experience on, on the SVI side. Uh, so just talk a little bit about those OEMs and, and how they were chosen. Yeah, I mean, we chose those OEMs based off of their geographic location. You know, they're spread across the Northeast to the Midwest to out West in, in Colorado. But we also just, they build different types of products. So you could kind of showcase a, a, a variety of the way that the tra chassis is being utilized and what it becomes. And, and be quite honest with you, they're three of our best OEMs as far as volume goes and, and best customers. So uh, really the idea that we had there was just to give them a little bit of a, an opportunity to highlight their products and what they do and just highlight uh, a little bit of their DNA uh, mixed in with what we've been doing here for the last five weeks. Okay, before we jump into the uh, to the next video, which is going to sort of dive a little deeper into the Metro Star chassis and the Gladiator, Chazzy. Um, first of all, uh, during that video, I want to remind everyone that there is an ask a question box on your screen. So as you have questions about that, don't hesitate. Uh, uh, ask your questions, send them in. We'll, we'll get to as many as we can. Uh, and then, of course, you know, Ricky is going to be uh, jumping all over those uh, chassis with, uh, with, with his questions about maintenance and things like that. And I'll be covering some of the, some of the, the more model uh, driven questions, but do you have, before we jump into that video, do you have any general comments about, about uh, Spartan Fire chassis before we get into the, the specifics of each of each product? No, I just, all I would share, Chris, is that, you know, again, you've got a Metro Star and a Gladiator here, um, very similar in option content, but very different from the execution, from the width of, width of the cab and, and, uh, and size and, and engine availability, but we've got two of our best experts here, so we're pretty excited not only to showcase uh, what these are in the video, but come back and let, and let these guys really uh, dig deep. As you can see to, the, to one of the units here over my shoulder, we tilted the cab so that uh, on the Metro Star, when we get specific questions related to things to do with the engine, uh, cooling packages, wiring, and that, we have full access to it, which we haven't been able to do with any of our other videos. Okay, perfect. 
Perfect. Well, let's get into, let's let uh, Jeff and Greg get themselves situated over there. So when we come back, we can dive right into it. And let's, let's take a look at the video on the, uh, on the Metro Star and the Gladiator. Welcome, folks. My name is Jeff Seal, OEM Sales Director for Spartan Chassis. Today, we're going to talk about the Gladiator and Metro Star models at Spartan. We specialize in safety of our vehicles and customization. This is our MetroStar cabin chassis. This cab is 94 inches wide and offers two different style front fascias. Here behind us we have the classic and we also additionally offer an evolution style front end that is a more modern or European look. Both offer standard the flip down grille. This allows for easy access to both the check and fill of the oil for the engine. Additionally, we have a guard here that protects the ember separator and air intake system. As we look at this cabin chassis, and you'll notice with both the Gladiator and MetroStar, we offer two-piece windshields. This is for safety for the occupant. The added pillar in the center aids in rollover protection. As we move around this chassis, you'll notice our A-pillars. They are very narrow in design to help the driver see approaching traffic at an oncoming intersection. As we walk around the side of the cab, you'll notice our raised roof design. This is designed to start the raised portion forward of the driver and officer. This allows for more headroom in this area and easier entry and egress. Next, we're gonna talk about some of Spartan safety features. Our electronic stability control is designed to allow for the vehicle to stay stable in a high speed turn and cornering event. Our advanced protection system is standard on all models of Spartan cabin chassis. We have strategically placed side curtain airbags above every entry door. These airbags are sized per the size of the cab. For example, a larger cab would have a larger airbag. These are designed to keep the occupants in the vehicle in the event of a rollover or a severe crash. As you move to the interior of the vehicle, here you will see Spartan's three-step design. This design is put in place to allow for lower cab steps and easier entry and egress. Here we have a multi-spec gray paint, which is also available in black and red. Additionally, we have an easy to clean paint. And lastly, we also have a Line-X bed liner coating that is available in extreme duty applications. As we move to the rear of the vehicle, we see that we have a completely flat floor area. That is again for ease of egress and entry. Here at Spartan, we place our engine farther forward and lower in the chassis. It actually sets forward of the center line of the front axle. This allows for better handling and maneuvering during high speed events. Additionally, this provides a larger flat floor crew area for the occupants inside. Lastly, this allows for better cramp angles and turning radiuses. Standard on all Spartan models, we have incorporated the high air intake design. What we're looking at here is the air plenum tubing. Notice it's streamlined and straight design for better performance and cooling. Additionally, you'll take a look at the clamping device and connection points. We have reduced the connection points for easier maintenance and quicker servicing. This system was designed for performance and maintenance in mind. So when, as we look at our air cleaner design, we have placed that above the radiator. It's easily accessible with two flip latches. Our air filter element we have designed is an off the shelf, non-proprietary part. So this can be obtained through several local fleet stores. The good thing about this filter is it fits every single Spartan model. Along with the new radiator design, Spartan has completely re-engineered the surge tank system. As temperatures increase in the engine, the fluid in the surge tank can be reclaimed for additional cooling. As temperature demands are reduced, it can be discharged into the coolant holding tank. As we see here, we have a coolant reservoir that is completely visible with the cab down to indicate whether coolant is needed to be added or you're at a safe level. Next, let's discuss the most important feature of this new design, 
the variable speed fan clutch. This system is designed to come on at variable speeds depending on the coolant demands. It will ramp up 5, 10, all the way to 100%. The main advantage of this system is we are not robbing horsepower en route to the scene. Here we have the Gladiator chassis, which is a 99 inch wide chassis that houses a L9 at 400 horsepower all the way up to the ISX 15 at 605 horsepower. Moving around to the side of the chassis, we offer several different paint schemes, over 100 different paint colors and customized brake lines that the department can detail any way they like. On both the Gladiator and MetroStar models, we offer a large variety of cab styles, from two-door style cabs to MFDs, as you see here, all the way up to ELFD style cabs or extended long four-door cabs. As we look at the flooring, this is a tread plate that is Linex coated with rolled edges and completely eliminates the need for stair nosing that typically catches dirt and debris. This Gladiator is fully equipped with the Extreme Duty Dash. This includes the easy to clean paint with a matte finish to reduce glare. This Gladiator is equipped with a small tunnel option that can either house a L9 450 or X12 500 engine. With this option, the stair nosing is again completely eliminated. We have utilized the easy to clean paint and what this provides is additional space for the officer and driver's hip room. As an option, we offer the HEPA filtration system. This system effectively removes toxins from the air 19 times an hour. It is rated at a MERV level of 17, which is equal to a hospital surgical room. The HEPA system can be placed in several locations throughout the cab. This is the tunnel mount location that is mounted on the back side of the slope of the tunnel. Also, this can be mounted above the forward facing center crew seats in applications where we have larger raised roofs. Our HVAC system is known as the industry leader as far as moving air, cooling and heating the vehicle. The HVAC has 18 vents located in the crew area above the driver and officer and two vents above the dash for superior defrosting. We offer standard hot dip galvanized chassis frame rails. As an option, we can move into the powder coated and painted frame rail, as you see here. Additionally, we offer a full galvanized option. Fit and finish is important as well as functionality. We offer our wiring harnesses routed down the left hand side of the vehicle, all fully supported. All our wiring connection are weather packed to inhibit and stop corrosion inside the terminals. That wraps up our Gladiator and MetroStar cab models. Please keep in mind, each model is 100% customizable and we look forward to seeing you again. All right, great. Well, hopefully that, uh, hopefully that gave you a good uh, baseline for what is offered on the, on the Spartan chassis models. Of course, what's really great for me to see is that already we've got audience questions coming in so uh yeah so that'll be good we'll get to them as soon as we can we're gonna we're gonna let ricky uh start asking some questions as well in a few minutes but first i had some some product related uh questions to ask and uh greg i was hoping uh you would be able to to give us a hand with some of these um first of all does the does the easy to clean paint system is that is that come with any added cost Uh, no, that actually is a standard feature, and we can show you the finish on this. So along with the interior door panels, the dash panel, engine tunnel, even the uh, transmission shift controller there, you can see it's all got the easy to clean finish. It's actually a PPG marine grade finish, um, and that is standard. And down here you can see we did away with the stair nosing and actually has a Linex coated diamond plate flooring. And so all that can be completely washed out. <clears throat> okay, talk a little bit about the HEPA filter. Is that does that HEPA filter? Does that come standard on Spartan chassis? Uh, no, that is an option, um, and the option price on that is about sixteen hundred dollars approximately. Um, and like I said, that is an option or an upgrade, but it does not come standard. 
Okay, what about legacy uh, Spartan chassis out there uh, in the field? Can the HEPA filter be retrofitted on older Spartan chassis? So yeah, the answer to that question is yes, it can be. Um, you would of course have to go through our APA group um, to order that, but yeah, you could get that and put that in a previously purchased or truck that's already in service. Okay, perfect. Let's talk a little bit, if you could move to the to the back of the truck there, or the back of the chassis there. Uh, wanted to talk a little bit about the, the galvanization uh, that, that happens. What components are galvanized uh, in the full galvanized frame option? Okay, so as far as if, if everything was to be galvanized, this particular feature here is galvanized frame rails, um, cross members, air tank brackets, everything with the exception of their axles, suspension components, and the frame, front frame extension. But everything else, this here is a galvanized frame rail with a powder coating over top of that, and then it's painted job color over top of the powder coating. So that's the full features, everything, battery trays, battery covers, everything. Okay, and we'll probably come back uh, to that with Ricky. I know he had some questions about that as well uh, when we switch over to Jeff. Uh, the maximum cramp angle. Uh, with the IFS front axle, what is the maximum cramp angle? All right, with the IFS, our max cramp angle is 53 degrees. Um, if, you, if you wanted to go to the beam, that has actually got a 50 degree wheel cramp angle. Um, but with the IFS, it is 53 degrees. Okay, and getting back to the APS system, just as sort of a means of clarification, uh, does that come standard on both the Metro Star and the Gladiator chassis? So the answer, yes, that does come standard. Um, it actually has front airbags and side impact airbags. Um, and if you can see up in the top above each of the crew doors and the front driver and officer doors as well, there's side curtain airbags. Okay, uh, talk real quick about cab styles. Uh, we saw one, uh, one, one, one slide, if you will, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the video, talked about a number of different cab styles. Um, obviously the widths are not the same, you're going from 94 to 99, but in terms of the, of, of the length, uh, are all of the cab model options that we saw in the video available on both the Gladiator and the uh, and the metro star yes yes they are so all the mfd emfd lfd elfd all those cab lengths are available in both the metro star and the gladiator cabs okay mark thank or mark <laughs> sorry okay greg thank you very much uh if you could hang tight just in case we need you again during the audience q a uh, that would be perfect. I want to switch over to uh, Ricky now and Jeff. Uh, Ricky, now that you, I'm going to let you jump right into this uh, right after you uh, just let me know now that you've seen the video. I mean, um, you know, you're our Spartan expert now, you know, uh, you know, between last week and this week. Um, what just now that you've seen the video on the chassis, just some first impressions and then roll right into your questions for Jeff. I don't know if I'm a Spartan expert, but I do like this truck behind me a lot. That's for sure. I definitely like this St. Louis rig. I, I, that one definitely struck my fancy. So, uh, yeah, man, I, I'm, I, I'm interested in a, a couple of I guys obviously have a couple questions about the chassis and certainly a lot more interested. In, I'm, I was uh, didn't have much knowledge about Spartan uh, before the last couple of weeks, and I do have some in, in the fleet, but uh, I, I need to learn some more about them. So I'm anxious to ask some questions about them. So, uh I guess we'll start with the maintenance stuff. Um, so so uh, I saw in the video that we're able to uh, drop that front grill down and access the oil fill and the oil check. Uh, is there a way to check the trans? Is there a way to check the transmission level without tilting the cab? Uh, morning, Ricky. Uh, yes, there is. You can check the fluid levels of the transmission through the shift pad inside the cab. Um, that's your additional way to check that fluid level. Okay, if we just, uh, you can kind of like walk back towards the uh, battery box there. I'll, I'll ask these two questions while you're walking there. So we talked a lot about um, the easy paint option. 
so uh, about is if it's standard option or not a standard option and in, in the uh, using some of the other material what are the features and the advantages of the easy paint option inside the cab well the easy clean paint uh, the main advantage is the durability it was basically designed for the marine industry and it has uh, much more durability than the multi-spec paint does in addition to that it's just like the word says easy to clean it was designed to be able to be wiped down easy um, and additionally we apply a matte finish to the dash so you don't get a great degree of glare okay and while we're talking about that pan those panels up front uh, one of the questions I had here is the switch panel itself like where actually the, the switches go into the panel is that a, a metal like aluminum or is that plastic? Mm -hmm. So you have options for either. Um, standard is the ABS type product. Um, the switch panel can be upgraded, the face of it, to the aluminum version if the customer desires. Yeah, I would certainly say with the with all the disinfecting going on, I imagine that's going to be a new a new hot item, uh, especially with the with the easy paint option. So while you're standing there at the frame rails, um, I, I saw in the video that you have mm -hmm. some different frame rail, how you protect the frame rail options. Um, so with departments in the Northeast that are dealing with a lot of this road chemicals that are applied to the roads for uh, snow and ice, what is the, the best kind of frame rail you would suggest for a department that has to deal with a lot of these road chemicals? Okay, we have a couple different options that uh, could intrigue the customers. This one you see here has the C channels galvanized only. And then the additional components are both powder coated and painted. Next, we move into our full galvanized option. Um, that encompasses the rails, the cross members, all the way up to your battery box covers and the box itself, as well as any hanger brackets you see. They're all galvanized. In addition, we galvanize air reservoir brackets and fuel tank straps as well. All righty. So uh, we talked about in the video, what is this gap sealant uh, that you, you refer to? Okay, Ricky, the gap sealant is applied between the two frame rails. That is designed to stop corrosive material from getting behind the rails and rusting them out. All right, if we can just go up to that battery box. Sure. So is the, uh, are all the depth components right there at the battery box, like the depth fill, the depth pump, and depth filters, all that right there? Yes, your, your fill, as you can see, is in the left-hand battery box. We apply covers to that box to help prevent DF fluid from getting in on top of the batteries. Um, the majority of the components are located right in this battery box. You do have some valving and switches that go to the exhaust system. And is this box that's covering the batteries, is that all standard? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you talked a little bit about uh, how you've mounted the motor up uh, much more forward in the frame rails so uh, my mechanics question will be uh, how does that does it make it difficult to replace the radiator now that that's so far up well Ricky that's a good question all the radiators are designed to be dropped below the frame um, this takes out about four to six hours out of the R&R time of removing and replacing the radiator that is a design we've had for about three, four years now. I'm sure my, I'm sure my mechanics would love to hear that. So, so uh, when we talked, to, also in the video, we talked about the air cleaner. What was the uh, premise behind moving that so far up now? I mean, the air intake, I apologize, air intake. Well, this was designed for both maintenance and performance. As you take a look at the air intake tubing, We've located the, these all above the turbo line. 
That is for, again, ease of maintenance. We have less clamping points, so you have less chance of uh, not tightening or torquing a clamp. So that was the main reason for doing it. Again, performance and maintenance in mind. Okay, and then I, I got to, I got a question about the VMUX system. Is is the VMUX system is that a system built specifically for Spartan? Uh, the VMUX system is a Weldon system um, that's used by ourselves and several of our OEMs. And in the in Spartan's experience, uh, the diagnostic software for mechanics is that easy to use? In case there's any electrical issues, I mean, all fire trucks have electrical issues, so it's not specific to anybody, but is it an easy system to use? Sure. Um, a lot of the key to this is training, having your technicians trained on the welding system, but it's much easier to diagnose than your old standard electric systems. Okay, and uh, we talked a lot about uh, in the video about the eight sensors for the uh, collision system. What what are those eight sensors, and what exactly do they do to protect the firefighters inside the fire truck? All right, Ricky. We have a slight audio issue this morning, so it's. Uh, but we're we're all we're, we're old hat at this now. We've uh, we we've taken care of this before. But let's see. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, the the idea of yeah, like whether whether or not. Let's talk about just chassis specification in general. Um, whether it's a Spartan chassis, E1 chassis, KME. What are like you, you've done this a lot over time. Uh, we talked a bit about standardizing bodies uh, last week. What um, what what are some of your I guess uh, tricks of the trade, or just some some little things you've learned over time that make the specification of the chassis easier for the departments you've worked for? We talk a lot about the body and and compartment space and all that kind of stuff, but when you you can really get granular with a chassis as well. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. Uh, the the big thing, and uh, that you know, I, I'm getting ready to write for the magazine, is you know we talked about you know what are some of those components that we worry about that give us the biggest challenges, and one of those would I, I take a lot harder look at the depth system, um, you know, uh, where are the components located, are they easy to maintain, uh, where are, you know are they standardized across my fleet, um, so I can have all those parts on the shelf. Um, I'm beginning to see the depth system is what keeps fire trucks out of service uh, the most now. Uh, you know, between the, the filters and all the, the depth pumps, the depth of filters, and those lines uh, getting all corroded. So, um, and then the next big one is uh, the frame rails. You know, that's why I was kind of asking those questions. Obviously, it's not uh, applicable, you know, to the south or anything like that. But uh, a lot of our north northeast companies and uh, you know, in the northern part of the country, I'm sure, are dealing with a lot of this corrosion with the frame rails, which obviously lowers the, the lifespan of the vehicle. So paying close attention to how much we're protecting that frame rail, the cross members, the hangers, all that sort of stuff is something I'm certainly starting to pay a lot more attention to. Uh, and even like, um, you know, galvanizing the, the diesel tank. I mean, we've had fuel tanks now that are wearing out for five or six years due to corrosion. So, um, and the same thing with frame rails, but it's not because of a manufacturer, it's more because of the road chemicals that are getting put on the road that, you know, now when they do that pre-treat, that chemical is really, really corrosive to the fire truck. And then uh, as firefighters, what we do is when we get back from the call is we spray the truck down. Well, that reactivates the chemical again and starts, you know, starts more eroding of the, the frame rail and stuff like that. So, um, and then when we talked about the motor and, and the radiator, uh, you know, my mechanics, they, they go out a lot for a lot of the radiator stuff. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, we're able to replace the radiator pretty easily. And, you know, all those lines are easily accessible for them. Uh, so they're, they're not crawling through the truck or anything like that. So that's, that's some of the stuff that I look for um, 
when I'm uh, specking the vehicle and also when we're doing the inspection. Okay, it looks like we have Jeff back. Um, so hopefully our audio is all back. I see him on the screen, but no one's told me in my ear pierce that he's back. So hopefully, hopefully we're back. Um, but uh, so Jeff, if you could maybe Ricky ask your last question again uh, mm -hmm. so that we can refresh everybody's minds. Okay, we, got, we talked a little bit about the, uh, the protection system on the fire truck and in the video, uh, we mentioned the eight sensors that are on the rig. Uh, what do those do to protect the firefighters inside the cab? So Ricky, the eight sensors are strategically located throughout the cab, down the sides of the cab, and at the rear of the cab. The reason for positioning these in this manner is to protect the occupants depending on where the cab gets hit or impacted. That's why we've uh, strategically located the eight sensors around the circumference of the cab. So, do those, so those sensors set off the airbag systems inside the vehicle so if you get in an accident all the airbags don't deploy, it's just the, where the sensors read them? Is that a correct statement? Uh, yes and no. Um, typically, yes, if you get hit in the front side quadrant, that side airbags are going to deploy. If it goes into a rollover event, the remainder of the airbags would deploy. Okay, and the, the last question I had, Chris, was uh, what, are, what are the height of the frame rails themselves? So you're talking how tall the frame rails are? Yes. This dimension here is going to be 10 and a half inches. Oh, very good. All right, Chris, let's uh, hear what everybody out there in the internet world has got to ask. Okay, we do have a number of questions coming in. I did want to ask you one, Jeff, before you step away. Um, in the video, you mentioned uh, that the, uh, the, the fan clutch was the most important feature. Um, and I just wanted to see if you could expand on that just a little bit about why, that's the, why you consider that the most important feature. Sure, sure, Chris. Um, the reason the variable speed fan clutch is so pivotal in this system is because our older system, the fan would engage at 100%. At that point in time when it engaged, it immediately robbed 75 horsepower off the engine. With the variable speed fan clutch, it ramps up or engages in smaller increments. So we'll say 5, 10, 15% as the coolant demands for cooling. So this is real pivotal in route to the scene. You have that 75 horse to use to get to the scene. So that's why it's so important. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Don't run away too far just yet. You're still on the you're still on the hook here for some questions that we've got coming in from from the audience. But before uh, I ask you and Greg some questions, I had uh, actually two for uh, for Mike. Uh, so if we could cut back to the desk, uh, Mike, I've got two for you. One I warned you about, but one you had to know was probably coming. So I think we're safe. Uh, but uh, first of all. Um, has Spartan considered any other engines uh, for the chassis? Yeah, that, that's a question that we're asked frequently, especially more today than ever. And the answer is we have definitely considered other engines, but when you look at the low volume that our industry is, and, and Chris, just to back up for a minute, I was a Peterbilt dealer for most of my career, so very familiar with that product and, and a much higher volume. But when you look at our industry and you look at the low numbers and then you, you look at the fact that Cummins is the primary provider to this industry, you know, we felt that the risk of introducing a new low volume engine into our, uh, into our chain for the, for the kind of numbers they were going to be, that there was a high risk that we would have maintenance issues and integration issues that we would plague us for a, for a time. And we've experienced that as we've tried to introduce other engines in the past. So to be honest with you, we chose uh, to pass on another engine and just to continue to further our relationship with Cummins and you know fire trucks break and there are always issues 
with any kind of equipment that's out there being used, but we feel our relationship with them and our commitment to them would just build our product better over time. Okay, and here's the one I didn't warn you about, but you kind of teased it a little bit. You were talking about that ad you have uh, hanging in your office there, and, and we do have a, a, a message from the audience here. Can we get a Spartan chassis with, with other Rev bodies, uh, for, so bodies from other brands? Yeah, at, 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 the, at this time, the answer to that is no. We're, we're not opening up the chassis to the other brands uh, across the board. We are, however, working on uh, some specific projects uh, for some quick delivery type opportunities where you'll probably see some annou announcements in the future across the other brands. But at this point in time, we don't have a plan to open up the, the entire uh, lineup of, uh, of options to the other brands, probably more specific to different products. Okay. Well, I'm done throwing your curveballs now. We're gonna we're gonna go back over to uh, to Jeff and Greg. Um, my first question, I believe, is more appropriate for Greg. I'm gonna kind of depend on you guys to to sort of guide me in the right direction there. But Greg, um, it was mentioned in the video. I'd like to re-clarify it and sort of expand on the question that was asked. The question is, what cab raised roof models? Uh, does Spartan offer for various applications, for example, from flat roof to X height? I believe that the answer to that is you go from the flat roof, I, I don't know what the measurement was for that, but up to 24 inches on the raised roof. Um, but th to, to add to that question, are all of those raised roof options available on both the Metro Star and the Gladiator? Uh, yes. So the answer to that question is yes. They are available from five inches all the way up to 24 inch razor roof extension. Okay, guys. Uh, this one I'm, I'm going to guess is I'm going to throw it to Greg because we talked about this. Um, is the cramp angle limited uh, or reduced with the addition of the front intake piping or, or uh, front discharge piping? Yes, so you will cut down to, I believe it's 44 degree cramp angle if you have a front intake. So yes, that is reduced. Okay, and speaking of the front bumper, um, can you provide, and, and this might be something where you say a few things, maybe Jeff will pick it up, I don't know, uh, but uh, can you provide a little bit more on front bumper options available? As far as Jump lines, stuff like that. Yes, we can do jump lines. We can do hose trays. Um, of course, the air horns can kind of be put anywhere. Um, siren speakers, Q2Bs, so on and so forth. So, Okay, in talking about wiring, uh, now I've lost where it was. Hang on just one second here. We had a question about wiring. Okay, what does Spartan do with respect to 12 volt wiring and the airline tubing routing? Are they bundled together or are they separate? Um, you can see. Trevor, Trevor, we primarily run everything one. down through here and you can see they're separated. So you have the color coded for the airlines and then the wiring there is in the loom. Okay, and in staying with the wiring, is a hard wire system uh, available as an option? Yes, it is available. Okay. Um, could you, uh, I guess, toward the rear of the engine, there are there is a there is a flat bar with rubber pads across the frame. Uh, the question is, can you explain what they are? Uh, yeah, Chris. Jeff, <clears throat> that is the rear transmission mount that is used in the L9 applications. Uh, this is an older design that we've had for over 40 years and it's tried and true and seems to be very durable so we've stayed with this entire design. Small block engine only. Okay Jeff, this is a good transition to this question. Um, for older Spartan Gladiator chassis, uh, is a retrofit kit available to relocate the air intake on top of the engine like the new chassis? Well, it certainly depends on the vintage of the engine, but to move into the full high air intake package, it would be 
cost prohibitive. Um, you have an entirely different radiator and cooling package. There's been cab modifications done to go to this package. So to move to the higher intake, uh, it, it would be really cost prohibitive. Okay, now this one, uh, I'm not sure which one of you wants to take it. Could you explain the manufacturer speed ratings for tires and how that relates to NFPA top speeds? Okay, so there's two levels of tire ratings. There's standard or intermittent ratings. Intermittent ratings are used in the fire industry and what that does, it basically states that you're gonna drive uh, less than 50 miles. They'll rate the tires at a higher speed per GVW weight rating. So that's where that plays into it. Um, over the road trucks, for example, wouldn't be able to pick that option because they're on the road for several hours at a time. Okay, getting into the HVAC a little bit, what does Spartan offer for hot and cold climates with regard to HVAC and uh, defrost uh, for cold weather conditions? Sure, sure. We offer several different defrost packages. Um, our high uh, HVAC system is one of the best in the industry. In addition, for extreme cold conditions, we do offer an underdash heat with a fresh air intake. That performs very well here in uh, northern Canada, northern U.S., so that is definitely an option that's available. Okay, this is uh, getting into some of those colder climates. This is a, a question uh, for you uh, about them. It, uh, it relates a little bit. Uh, does Spartan do a cab design for top mount pump controls uh, in an enclosed cab? Absolutely, we've been doing this design for over 10 years. Uh, fully encloses the pump operator in the back of the cab. It works very well in our large cabs, our extended long four doors with a 24 inch raised roof. Uh, gives, the, gives the pump operator a full view of the scene. Since the cab is so big, they can fully stand up and operate the controls from either a, in a cold climate or it's even used in uh, warm climates, Chris. Okay, let's talk a little bit about axles and suspensions and which ones are available on Spartan chassis. The, the exact wording of the question is what axles and suspensions are available on Spartan chassis? Okay, um, front ratings go from 18 all the way up to 24. There are spring suspensions that are standard. And then on the front, you can move up to the IFS, which is a full air ride style suspension. That's gonna give you the 53 degree wheel cut that we mentioned in the, earlier in the show. Um, moving to the back, you can go from 24K ratings all the way up to tandems up to 63K in either spring application, rubber block, or full air suspensions. Okay, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty simple one for you this time. How often should the HEPA filtering be replaced? So the manufacturer recommends that the HEPA filter in the average um, um, duty cycle should be put replaced twice a year. Okay, and getting back to the uh, uh, getting back to the to the frame, is the C channel frame liner standard on every chassis? Um, if so, why? And can that frame liner be deleted? So there's a number of things to take into consideration when you have a frame liner. Um, first and foremost, the weight of the vehicle, the GVW ratings, the length of the wheelbase all dictate whether you need a single or a double liner. Okay, Jeff and Greg, well, I do believe you guys are off the hook now. That, that wraps our uh, Q&A from the audience. Thank you both very much for joining us today. Uh, this, one, this one was actually a little trickier in, in a way, you know, in, in that, you know, you guys both had very specialized areas you wanted to talk about, and thanks a lot 
for making it as simple on me uh, as, as was possible. But before we wrap everything up, I did want to send it back over to Mike for, for a few words. Mike? Thank you, Chris. And again, thank you, Ricky. Uh, this was uh, an interesting day because chassis doesn't have as much uh, f sizzle with, uh, with the aerials and, and the pumpers in the past, but I think they did a really good job you know, showing, showcasing what is Spartan and, and how the DNA works. Um, tomorrow's show, I just want to talk a little bit about it. I'm very, very excited about it. Um, you know, we have at Rev, we have partnered with IDEX and Microsoft, and we have a telematics system it's cloud-based where uh, you're basically, your fire truck communicates now through the cloud to Cummins, Allison, uh, and also to, sends emails to whoever you, you dictate uh, gets them. So Ricky was talking earlier about, about uh, you know, uptime and, and maintenance. You know, the fact that the check engine light goes off on a truck, uh, your maintenance manager or even your, your dealer could get an email at three o'clock in the morning when that, when that sensor goes off and it'll actually diagnose what the sensor is. And so it's something that we offer standard on all of our chassis and it's something we're very excited about. So we're actually going to attempt a live demo uh, tomorrow to tap into a truck and then allow you, you the audience to ask questions about, about that. Uh, the other thing, and this is probably the thing I'm the most excited about is, you know, we've been talking clean cab in every one of these uh, opportunities that we've had. Every, every week people have asked questions. Uh, and the clean cab concept up until now has really been around carcinogens, it's been around protecting the firefighters uh, on the way to or from a scene, especially from a scene after they've been uh, exposed to, to smoke. Um, but clean cab means, you know, COVID. It, it means bacteria and it means, uh, you know, how do we protect a firefighter today that may be exposed in a traffic accident or on a, on a, on a call, an emergency call, a medical call, to, to COVID or to some sort of a viral or bacterial uh, deal. So what we have, we've partnered with a company, we're going to release it tomorrow. We have an exclusive uh, deal that we're going to be able to take clean cab concept to a new level. And we're going to be able to retrofit and offer uh, a solution uh, to the firefighters and to the departments to, to protect their firefighters uh, at a higher level from COVID while they're on the job. So we're very, very excited about that. And uh, we've got some experts coming on to talk about the 99 plus uh, percent kill rate, uh, third party testing we've had done. So we've been moving fast and furious with this product because we feel uh, it's our job and it's our duty to do whatever we can to, uh, to help protect the firefighters. So stay tuned, tune in tomorrow and, uh, and we'll be able to release this new product to you. Great, perfect. Thank you very much, Mike. Again, my thanks to Ricky for, uh, for coming on for an encore presentation today. Uh, like I said, now he's our Spartan expert, so we'll get his email and number out there for everybody so he, you, can, uh, you can call him and email him with all your, with all your Spartan questions now. Um, wanted to, <laughs> wanted to uh, real quick just uh, remind everybody for the rest of today, we've got uh, from one to two, we have uh, uh, FDIC-powered uh, education and uh, the engine company's guide to winning switching or stretching for success and that's with steve robertson we've also got two two uh, groups of rev showroom meetings today one from 11 to 1 immediately following this and the other one from 2 to 4 30 and of course we'll have our daily wrap up uh coming from uh, uh coming online through uh through facebook so again uh, don't forget those showroom meetings are important you can continue to make uh, appointments, even if even if it's about one of the other brands that we've already covered, the appointments are available to you. If we couldn't get to a question today, uh, this is a good time to to go in. Also, don't forget to explore that portal. Uh, there were a number of rigs that we have covered these past few weeks that are for sale. They are available. Um, and plus, like I've said on uh, on a few occasions, you know, I I always catch something that I didn't catch the first time when when I go back and and listen and view them again. So again, this has been Chris McClune for the Red Fire Group Apparatus Conference and Expo. Stay safe and have a good one. <laughs>